Tuesday, March 26th. Market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning, about 10.15 California time. I start out with stock market indexes and go to futures and sometimes sectors, crypto, forex, cycles, and maybe some other stuff. Today, I'm going to stick with the indexes and futures. Now, you guys know that I've been trying to justify a now because the market's been climbing and climbing larger and larger downside retracement correction dip not a bear move of any long-term significance but because in the last few weeks the market has kept on climbing and i have the same downside expectations the amount has gotten a little bit larger because the market's been climbing it doesn't change the technical picture. I don't have a signal yet. Do not jump the gun. I may miss the signal completely, the beginning of the bear move or downside correction. I may be able to hit it to the exact day, which you've seen many times. Uh, so the criteria I need is overbought and we came very close in some cases in the last few days, but not quite. And that would be last Thursday. So far, that is a high day, but we really don't have the kind of price action that I look for to be able to predict, and hopefully I'm right, a sizable correction. If so, one way or the other, if I can do it or not, I'm looking for 477 on the downside on the SPY. Next chart. We got the one minute spider. As you can see, it's very quiet today. Small range, popped up a little bit early, came up to around the lows of a couple of days ago, a little bit of resistance, nothing special, nothing unique. Can't put a handle on anything here as far as something to scream bloody murder about. We're slipping a little at the moment near the lows, but near the highs of yesterday. If we can get below yesterday's low, then and stay there and stay below yesterday's close, which is pretty much the low of the day or right near it. If that happens, then I've got a bearish engulfing and something to talk about, but I still won't have a red bearish ER official sell signal from my strategy. Close. Next. And the comments are essentially the same for the indexes across the board. This is the E-mini uh, June futures contract. At the moment, uh, we have today's high a little higher than yesterday. And we were officially overbought on Thursday, not by much, but at or above 75. And my custom relative strength index is what you see at the bottom in the subgraph number one, or two rather, or the sub panel as Ninja Trader calls it, is an RSI indicator, my custom version of Wells Wilder's RSI. And I created this myself, it's my custom version. I learned RSI from Wells himself. I hope he's still around. Last I heard he was living in New Zealand. Now, we could have a bearish engulfing red official sell signal, but it's needs to happen in the next couple of days pretty darn quickly. Today is a possibility. We do have a high higher today than yesterday's high. We do not have a low so far below yesterday's low. If that happens, then the green, I'm sorry, then the or, or yellow candlestick for today, my color code, not the standard candlestick coding color-wise, will turn red. Like over here um, on January 2nd, didn't produce a big down move or any to speak of, but it did stop the progress to the upside for a month, but it kept going. Again, people, I haven't seen in 52 years a move from October or that long ago, five months that has been so steady, so consistent, and perpetuation up sideways, little dip, up sideways, little dip, again and again and again. 
they're very rare that last this long, implying it's going to be any day when this thing starts to break. And I hope I get a signal the day it does start to break or very close to the top. Next tra uh, chart, E-mini, five-minute chart. There's the rally, midday. We're slipping off. We need to drop off to new lows, which it did yesterday and the day before. Eh, but that's only a couple of days. I really want to see something, you know, hit you between the eyeballs, so to speak. Next, crude. I'm sorry, Q's, the QQQ. NASDAQ uh, ETF has a higher high today. <clears throat> it could have a bearish engulfing, but we are missing that overbought condition for the RSI, custom RSI, and therefore we won't have a sell signal. Can't do it. But I've also got to point out possible double top, possible upside exhaustion gap on Thursday, the day of the double top. And there are some um, parts of this last month's price action that look toppy. <clears throat> The official downside breakout on this trading range is going to be a close at 432 or lower. And it's not close by. We're at 435 and three quarters. So that's 445 and three quarters, of course. And of course, it's 432. I just dropped the handle. Next, QQQ, one minute chart, five minute chart, excuse me, made a new low for the day just by a, barely in the last five, 10 minutes. But, you know, it could keep on going. Then we'll have a little bit more possibility of a bearish engulfing, which I would like. And then again, the third day, a lower low. But it hasn't happened yet. This market has been so strong, I can't believe it. I've got to wait until I've got something to scream about, and I will when I see it. Next, NASDAQ, June. Same story, higher high, languishing around, not really doing too much. NASDAQ, one minute chart, bouncing back and forth in here. Well, let's change it to a five minute so you can see a little bit further history. And there you have it. Rally into new high ground Thursday of last week. Hold back, pull back a little bit more yesterday. And today, so far, a lot of nothing, a little higher. Do I, I just I haven't got a great signal for the indexes at the moment, but I do have my ideas and expectations. Okay, let's go to the uh, Russell 2000. Same concept, trying to, but not very successfully so far, trying to top out. We'll see what happens. And the Russell one minute chart looks very much like the others. Bonds. We got a little bit lower than yesterday's low. The big feature here is no new lows since January, February. We've been going pretty much sideways with a little bit of a bearish tinge to it. I think we could easily slip into support one more time. I'm on, and I'm on, not ruling out minor new lows lower than the low in February. <clears throat> but I don't expect it to be a bear trend. I expect it to be still the process of bottoming out longer term. Again, kind of waiting for some significant moves. Tenure notes, same problem, waiting for some significant stuff. I hate to say that. I know everybody wants to trade. Me too, but I'm patient. I wait for signals. Otherwise, you got no disciplines. Next, tenure notes on a Five minute chart, a little bit of a dip, came back pretty good in a support area. I don't know. Well, let's see what happens. Crude popped up this morning. Maybe there's a small gap between today's low and yesterday's high, not particularly significant. We are in a resistance area. We did get overbought. It did top out and it did drop off about three days. Now, I remember that I had a false signal on Thursday of last week, I can't help that. It was bad data I was looking at. What I was looking at looked like a bearish engulfing ER sell signal, but the data I was fed was incorrect. 
something that happens once in a while. It's fairly rare. It'll happen again, probably. I hope not very often. You don't know it at the time that you see it, usually. Otherwise, of course, you wouldn't do what you did. I recommended a short sale because of the signal. The next day, I realized the signal was a bad one and corrected the problem. Today's a decent rally. We're still in resistance. No signals lately. Overbought, yes. Right smack at the top of the resistance area, great. And it did what I thought it was going to do, even though there wasn't a signal. So I was right by pure luck, so to speak. Except it did get overbought, and it was the high of the resistance. And so that did imply it was supposed to move back down. And we're still there. So I think it's still trying to top out. Next, heating oil. Bearish engulfing today at the moment. Remember, you got to stay at bearish engulfing on the close. Otherwise, the signal will change. The market is not over the session yet. The session hasn't ended. So it's a dynamic, always, when the market is still open, signal. Could get, you know, bigger, better, lower, uh, or the opposite. But right now, we have an outside down day, a bearish engulfing, and that implies lower prices. And it's nowhere near uh, a bearish signal for me, which the last one was on February 13th, right there. I don't have any strategy running yet, so the colors are the standard candlestick colors my code er signals code changes the candlesticks to yellow if you're overbought or oversold or red or green for the official buy or sell signals which don't always work but i always 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 have a tight protective stop under one circumstance out of a thousand probably you might have a loss you didn't like in terms of its size my stops are geared to be moving quickly in your favor and not expose you to large losses to begin with. 99.9% .9 of the time, whatever, a very large percentage. Next, natural gas. Made new lows for the trend yesterday completely, but didn't stay there. Closed a bit above the previous lows, which were back on February 19th. That could be a little bit friendly as far as the possibilities are concerned, but it still closed lower than the opening. It still closed below the previous day's low. It still made a new low for the trend. It just didn't close below the previous low for the trend. That's what I'm looking for, for a further downside swing right away. Now, because that didn't happen, we are a little tiny bit higher. And there's a possibility we could have a little bit of a bounce. I'm still bearish, bounce or no bounce. Next, gold. Wow. Big gap up today. Challenge the high made only last Thursday. And very strong price action on the surface. But I've drawn a line across the tops, sort of. They slant upwards. I drew a line across the tops on the subgraph or panel and they slant downwards across the tops of the rsi that's what's called a divergence that happens a lot at tops and bottoms of course it's a reverse at bottoms new low in price but not a new low in the indicator so i'm looking for it to turn down it was extremely overbought a couple of weeks ago I think this is building some sort of top. Can't put my finger on it yet, but silver is a lot different. Wow. Last Thursday, we had a super big bearish engulfing and it was overbought. So I've got an ER official sell signal Thursday of last week. Friday, we went down below Thursday's low. Yesterday was an inside doji and today we're making new lows again working great the inputs that i have on the various strategies have turned out to produce good trades and at the moment i'm flat but i don't have to be if you used a little bit more leeway a little bit looser sts smart trailing stop 
and you won't have been bumped out of the trade. Now, I like the signal, and I like the fact that we're getting a brand new bearish ER sell signal today, so we may very well be back into a new short by the close if there's no big rally. That'll be an ER1 new short position trade. Therefore, it's going to generate the possible entry for an ER3 trade in the next three days after today. ER1, always the day of the signal. And today is a new bear signal, just like four days ago at the top. They do happen this way sometimes. So next, platinum. Not anything like gold or silver. Popped up a little bit. Moving up out of support. Looks like it could rally some more. High-grade copper. <clears throat> Got overbought for about five days. Topped out exactly what I was hoping for. Now, for the last couple of three days in a support area, and showing some sign, not much, of turning, but I'm not happy with that yet. I think there's a possibility it could sink a little bit more into support. But at any time now, I think the market could turn up. Lately, we've been in a little bit of a bull trend. And lately, we've seen new highs since May of last year, almost a full year ago. This is turning quite friendly, if especially we can make highs higher than last week's highs, and that would turn me outright bullish. Next, soybeans, oil, meal, corn, wheat. Today, a, a doji sideways, a little lower, eight and a quarter cents momentarily. This is May beans. The All these futures contracts are specific contract tradable months. None of them are continuation contracts. So, uh, long term, definitely bearish in grain in general, but I'm watching for possible longer term bottoms and just don't have what I need yet. So, I'm looking for turnarounds, I'm looking for bearish signals, I'm looking for reasons to scream bloody murder. We're going to go down and test the lows of the trend and make new lows for the trend. Not quite yet, but we did have overbought conditions. It does look like but not really yet, like it's trying to top out. So let's watch carefully. I think it's trying to top out. Next, oil, same thing, overbought, close to resistance, sideways. All I really need is some sort of a bearish signal. And then I'll scream bloody murder, Tio del Fuego, head in south, land of um, south, tip of South America, nicknamed Tio del Fuego, land of fire. Uh, history tells us the uh, original natives down there lit fires next to the beach and the conquistadors, Cortez or whoever, saw flames from their ships. And so they called it land of fire. Next, no history lesson next time. So I'm looking for a turn. Uh, meal. Same thing. What can I say? I think it's going to go down to test support again looking for some reason to say it's starting or started the day it does. So I could be late here and miss the turn. Okay, corn. We got the bottom to the exact day. That's why I made, created ER signals for TradeStation and NinjaTrader, both. And I'm showing you NinjaTrader. And it worked great. Bottom, caught it. Nice rally. We are now trading slightly below where I got out about a week and a half ago. And there was a little bit more that I left on the table on both the bottom and the top at this point. Nevertheless, good. Bearish, looking for new lows in general. Can't get a handle on the start of it quite yet. Wheat, same thing. Even though I had a double, very, very rare, back to back at the bottom of the market buy signals bullish engulfing on march 8th buy signal it made a lower low on march 11th that monday and created another bullish engulfing er buy signal 
all of the criteria on both days were fulfilled. Both signals created trades. We have one trade that we're out of today that made very little, just barely a profit, unfortunately, but a profit. The other signal uh, bought within a couple of ticks of the low of the day, almost exactly the low, not quite, on March 13th. And today we're out. So we have two trades, one barely profitable and the other one not bad. And we're flat. So that does not mean I'm bearish. It does not mean anything. It means the strategy got out. I'm still bearish intermediate to long term. And frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if we topped out yesterday. I can't pin uh, any signal on that, but it is around or a little bit above some resistance. And today we are dropping quite a bit. Let's see what happens. You know, I'm bearish on grains basically. Here we go with the um, wheat five minute chart. And you can see that with slightly different stops, we are just barely surviving with the ER1 position trade and ER3 position trade. The stops are the different style yellow stop lines and they move sometimes every few minutes, sometimes maybe not in a whole day. So they don't move like regular trailing stops move. This is not your average STS smart trailing stop. Cattle got long very close to the bottom several days after, barely in time. We are still in this longer term trade, but we came pretty close to our stop. Now I could have retrospect 2020 hindsight, adjusted my stop so that we would have gotten bumped out yesterday at a lot higher, maybe probably around 182 and a half. But what happens if today is a low day and in the next several days we go above 182 and a half and I'm still in the trade? That would look kind of smart, leaving in the stop down here. But I don't know that that's going to happen. My crystal ball is uh, not quite as clear as it used to be sometimes. Yes, it is. I'm kidding. Hogs. Now, here's the comparison I'm trying to make. And I'm, as of today, looks like I cannot make the comparison anymore between cotton and hogs. You know, this looks like a head and shoulder top in hogs. It was 16 days from the first shoulder high to the head of the formation, and then another exact 16 days to the last shoulder from the head. Symmet symmetrical, perfect. Head and shoulder tops and bottoms are usually very close to being perfectly symmetrical. Not always. This one happens to be perfect. But when it came down to the neckline on Friday of last week and went below it, it closed smack on the tr neckline. It's supposed to stay below the neckline and close lower somewhat dramatically for a day or two or maybe even three for a classic bearish breakout. It didn't. It turned around and the next day, Monday, yesterday, it closed above the neckline. Uh-uh, not supposed to happen. Something's wrong. Pattern may be bad. Today, it's rallied even more. This is on the verge of ruining the pattern completely. Only if it can go sideways another few hours or a day or so, and then break the neckline and drop below the lows of last Friday on a closing basis, would I scream bloody murder? The head and shoulder top is still good, and it's supposed to go down to about 77. But again, no breakout. No downside objective. The pattern's not complete and it's starting to get ruined. Next chart. Unleaded gas is one of those ice symbols. So I'm now going to shift over to some trade station charts to show you the unleaded gas. And here we go. <clears throat> and the others that are on ice exchange. We got overbought, data turned yellow. We're starting to have a new low close since the overbought condition today, maybe. And I would like to see it close below today's low very soon in order for it to start slipping off even more. 
I never got an official sell signal. All I got was overbought conditions and it's starting to slip back down. You also should notice that those overbought con conditions were extremely close, a little bit above the previous top of major significance, September 15th, when I did get at the top of the market, the red bearish ER sell signal. Of course, this one is on the exact high day. Wouldn't you like to take a trade from that day all the way down to the oversold condition on that day? Well, my strategy did not quite all the way to the bottom, but probably a few days afterwards, we got bumped out and it was a heck of a great trade. Next, um, sugar. Minor new high for a few weeks, but it's after it was oversold. It's one of my favorite tools. The RSI, Wells Wilders, my version of Wells Wilders original. So got oversold a couple of days, turned around exactly what I would like. Too bad it didn't have a bullish engulfing, and then I would have had a signal. Same thing for this condition way over here. And it's true, it can get oversold for quite a while sometimes, not very often. And you can miss out on a big move, and it gets very frustrating. But you're not losing money. Yeah, if you were short, but I didn't get short. I didn't have a signal, so we're waiting for a signal on sugar. Next is cocoa. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been watching this several times today. You gapped up in a new historic high ground. You ran up quite a bit. That looks, a couple of hours ago, again, I've been saying this again and again, like a blow off top. Now, at the moment, we're around unchanged. And if it can get, and that's a big stretch, below yesterday's low, we will have a major sell signal on the ER system. And practically anybody under the sun should recognize the bearish engulfing and extreme situations. Therefore, a huge sell signal in a whole variety of ways, I'm sure. But I haven't got that lower low than yesterday's low yet. And it's far away from it. But this certainly looks like a blow off top. You know, I don't even know if they have options on cocoa. But if they did, I certainly would be interested in a, a, a put. I'll just say that. Not necessarily a recommendation. Don't want to get in trouble with the government or anything. But common sense tells you that would not necessarily be a bad idea. Next, coffee. Uh, pennant formation, sideways, couple of months now, most of this year, got mu not much to say, looking for the uh, coffee to give me some direction. And I have to say, this is the cotton chart. It's head and shoulder top is perfect. I did get a sell signal on the first shoulder high. It worked for a day and a very nice break. Seven days later, we got the top of the market. And guess what? Seven days later, we have the last shoulder high, classic symmetrical, neckline slightly upward slanted, classic breakout, and in this case, classic test of the neckline, a little bit weird because you rallied above the neckline, but you closed below it, so that's okay, and down you went. Today's the first decent rally day. The key here is not to go back up above the neckline at all and probably not even get that close. I wouldn't be surprised if today's high was the high and we're about to turn down. The downside objective is 82.90 or 83. And all so far is in progress correctly. And we're back to OJ. Head and shoulder top, first shoulder sell signal, great. Overbought at the head, great. Last shoulder high bearish engulfing, but not official sell signal, great. Minimum downside objective was right smack in the area where it went to, great. Not only that, we ended up with a green buy signal, essentially at the bottom of the decline, almost exactly. And then a huge rally, and guess what? We've got the rally high of a little double top over a couple of three weeks, but the Breakout to the downside has not even occurred yet. We're just going sideways. I still think it's going to go down, 
I wish it would prove me right or wrong one way or the other. Right now, it's just sideways. And we're going back to the RBOB gasoline. You guys have a great day. Profitable trading to you. Stan Ehrlich, bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I'll be hosting or co-host the BARS, B-A-R-S, closing 45-minute at around noon California time show, the Ninja Trader Show, recapping during April uh, the week with new signals, commentary, trading strategies, etc. You guys have a great day.